teacher training. When I was on my teacher training course, my one year postgraduate teacher training course to turn me into somebody who'd learned ceramics with science and maths, you know, my three year degree, into a teacher, my postgraduate um, masters. Uh, the most important, most interesting lecturer I found, I was writing down loads of notes, was the one that all the other students thought was rubbish, it was terrible. But I saw the mistakes he made during his half an hour lecture. It was the best thing of my whole year. I learned so much by seeing somebody do so many mistakes. So, for you, I'm gonna make a whole bunch of mistakes. And I'm gonna do that. And I want you to write down what all those mistakes were. So that when you become a teacher, you can internalize these things and not make those mistakes a second time after you make them, because you will make mistakes. One of the things to do is make your mistakes, learn from them, figure out which classes didn't go so well, figure out what you did. It won't be just you, uh, there'll be other factors. What you did that wasn't as good and how to improve it. So. Here is my lecture on all the things you shouldn't do whilst you're a teacher. Okay, just give me a sec. I'm gone for a minute, because this is what I wear for my teaching. And now, a quick change. Quick change. Because most people like to be cool and groovy and down with the kids and wearing the like, same clothes that the PE teacher wears. So, and so it starts. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, uh, my, my name is uh, Mr. Stevens. Um, I, I'm, I'm here to, uh, to, to teach you about, um, um, uh, and then, I'll, I'll be teaching you, and, and this is my notes from the lesson. This, this is all the things that you need to know for the lesson that I'm teaching you. And uh, I'll, I'll put it back on the screen later. And so, yeah. Um, right, uh, so, uh, you, you, you lot like, want, want to um, learn to be um, teachers and, and teach many different people, many different subjects. and. Uh, and so, I've, um, I've, hold on, I've got, got some notes. So, uh, I'm going to teach you how to present yourselves during lessons in a positive manner that will uh, increase your interaction and your interactability um, in a classroom situation, uh, increasing the enigma of your situation so that um, the epiphanies can come to the students um, during your lessons and yes uh, good uh, thank you very much bye so what did you spot touching your face yeah don't do that so you will do this and then you'll notice and your next lesson do it less. Saying pausing words instead of pausing. Pausing is a good idea. Saying things quickly and slowly is a good idea. However, filling your pauses with like, uh, mm, that's not a good idea. You'll lose people. Oh, I forgot to do one. My favourite one from my recent school experience over in Portugal was a teacher who, whilst teach training, who was continuously saying the phrase, this is very important. Maybe once in a lesson, but then you've just highlighted that this thing I'm just about to say is important, so therefore that decreases the importance of everything else. You say it five or six times during a half an hour teacher training or a lesson and all the students will go, 
okay, you've said that and now it's all boring. Because you've said it several times, I'm bored. Same with sniffing and showing lots of reading that's badly put together. Write it on the board as you're saying it. If you want the students to have notes written in their books, say it whilst you're writing. But even more important, get the information from the students. Make it a two-way process. Ask the students what they think is important. In this case, this teach trainer should have been asking us what are the mistakes teachers make using your hands and waving them about across your face bad beside your face good include people in the dialogue get the students to come up with their ideas write their ideas on the board and adapt them use them get the students thinking oh that's my idea he's using yes i'm using your ideas but they're the ideas i want to develop in my lesson and then I might add the ones that nobody has come up at at the end. And this is also what you're doing in the lesson. If the lesson's about drugs, if the lesson's about momentum, oh, with the case of technical words, leave them out of the lesson. Momentum lessons, I teach the whole lesson about car crashes, about people running into people. It's things that are moving, running into other things that are stationary or other things that are moving. And if this is, a science that I teach without using equations, just doing examples. What happens to you if a heavier car hits you? Will it push you back more or less than a freewheeling slower car? If the car's going faster, will it push you back more or less than a slow moving freewheeling car? Get them involved, make it a car crash, maybe something that they understand. If there are two people in the trolley moving towards you, will it be harder to stop the trolley or easier? If the trolley's going twice as fast, will it be harder to stop the trolley or easier? And then at the end of the lesson, having started the lesson with a line for the title, all the students are going, what's the title of this science? And I'll say to them, right, okay, now you know all about it. What's the title we need? And then they will make movie science, moving science, moving mass science. I accept all these things. I put them on the board. Great. And then underneath I say, yeah, physics people, moving mass science, what they call is this word. Okay, hands up, who couldn't pronounce that? Now I'm getting them to say the word, and then afterwards I'll help them correct them. Moving mass science, it's momentum. If you start by writing momentum on the board, the students will all go, well, I don't understand. It's a word. There isn't an understanding part to it. Keep it till the end. Technical words, keep them out of your lecture, out of what you're saying, I feel so weird teaching without a tie on and a collar. I'm just used to it. I wear a uniform for the same reason that a doctor and a police officer wears a uniform. Because without the police officer's uniform and him saying, can I see your license? People won't respond in the right way. And the same with the doctor. If a doctor says, do more exercise, and he's wearing a t-shirt, not so much. Same with teachers. If you want not to get respect, then look like you don't deserve it. Also, respect is something earned by being good at your job, not hesitating to use the students' ideas, respecting their ideas, putting the good ones on the board, never saying, oh, that's a bad idea. Just saying, that's an idea I can't use. It doesn't come into this lesson. Anyone else got a good idea? Being fun. I have been told that my YouTubes are just full of comedy. Yes, comedians are interesting to watch. That's their job. And that's also the job of the teacher. I don't tell jokes, but I try to keep myself 
amusing, worthwhile watching. I'm moving around the classroom. I'm jiggling about. I'm talking to people. I'm asking individuals. If no one else is talking, I will ask the kid who's writing something down while I'm talking. I don't like that. I will have writing down, get some things on the board, and I go, right, write those down. When everyone's got those down, then we'll get some more. So when you finish your writing down, I want you to be thinking about what else to say. I'll give you five minutes. Everyone write that down. I've got a timer. I'll put my five minutes on. Oh, don't sniff. Go, cool. keep eye contact as well. Eye contact is important. Otherwise, students would just listen to radio programs to learn. Televerograms, got the visual effects, better. But a person being in the classroom gives that emotional connection. You'll learn much, much better of somebody in the room who's talking to you, talking to the whole audience and to individuals, bringing them into the lesson, making them empowered by writing their words on the whiteboard. Okay, that's all of the ones I can think of right now.